Jim. Thank you. I'm being joined by my colleagues today. It's not just me, um, because it's never just about one person, is it? So you met them earlier, of course, our director for CTLS Academics, Stacey Buckaloo, and Megan Stanfill, our supervisor for digital transformation. And we are dividing and conquering with the presentation today. So I'll get us started, but I figured we can um, click through slides for each other, maybe. Is that all right? Mm -hmm. And then I'll hand oh. the um, mic over to them when it's, when it's time. Is that all right? Mm -hmm. OK. <clears throat> uh, welcome again to Cobb, by the way. And um, thank you for opening all of your bags of chips. <laughs> um, that is uh, very helpful. So uh, Lani asked us to speak to the session on becoming human alongside tech and had shared some data with us around teachers feeling overwhelmed by the amount of just information and technology that surrounds them. I heard some of that in our table talks today, too and how can we potentially assist them with that? So that, um, what you heard Lonnie say this morning, it's, it's not them, the, the tech, allow the tech to do what the tech can do, so that the humans can do what the humans do, right? And so that is a lot of what you have heard us talk about at the Learning Council uh, Georgia meetings over the last several years. We have talked to you about how in this district, we have developed our own learning management system called the Cobb Teaching and Learning System, or CTLS, as you'll hear it referenced today, in an effort to customize a platform that works for our teachers. So we're going to speak a little bit to that this morning for those of you that may not be familiar with it. And it's also kind of a, the launching pad for what we have ventured into as of this year in terms of learning resources um, and professional learning. So I'm actually going to turn it over to Stacy, who's going to talk to you a little bit about the history and the current status of CTLS before I dive a little bit more into learning resources. We'll conclude with Megan, who's going to talk to you about how we've approached professional learning with all of that. So when I first came on, oh, do I have anything? Yes, I don't think they're recording. Oh, okay. It's already on. Edit Just that out. Clip it. <laughs> Forward. Okay. Things I don't like, being recorded, being on video, and being in front of other people. <laughs> I know I'm a director now. Okay, so when we first started, when I came to Cobb, one of the big things is that all of these places on the left is where our teachers were going. So they were going to Picasso to get content. They were going to Google, of course, and they still do. I'm not saying that they don't. They were going to Weebly, Blackboard. So one of the goals that we had, and also OneNote, that was OneNote and email, because you know it was just in their email. So one of the very first things that we did is we took all of the content and put it in one place for our teachers. So very similar to what you were talking about earlier with the Curriculum Hub, this is what we did. So we called it our floor. So when our teachers were teaching, as long as they used the content that was in here, their students would not slip through the cracks, okay? So you can't force a, a horse to drink, but you can bring them water. So one centralized um, location for all of our CCSD vetted resources, um, aligned to Cobb Teaching and Learning Standards, which was extremely important. And then it was designed to save time, planning, and maximize teaching. So from there, we went to all the other areas. We went to the parent, we went to the rest of the stakeholders. So we started with our teachers, but then our parents also needed one place. Our students, thanks to COVID, also needed one place. You can go to the next one, okay? So the, and I put this up here because it was a little melancholy. When um, the very first, the picture in the back, that's what it looks like when we first started, okay? And this is what it looks like today. So using all of the um, information that we've learned over the years, plus our teachers, our parents, and our stakeholders are driving the design. So for teachers, by teachers, we say that all the time, that whatever we do is based on our teacher feedback. We try to get as much as we can from them, our teachers, our admins, where's Trisha sitting over there eating her sandwich. Um, she is on our new uh, focus admin group. So she's bringing from her buildings, her building, more information to us so we can design the platform. So it's Cobb created. Our big push right now is CTLS 5.0, which is coming in May. And this is where um, the need was driven from our difference in looking at what content, um, how we were gonna provide content to our teachers. Um, alrighty. 
I have the pleasure for the last seven years of leading not only digital transformation um, area, but also learning resources. It's been a topic of conversation for um, Trisha and I when she was in Gwinnett for a long, long time, actually, as to how do you maximize the learning resources in a district. And, tr you know, traditionally, just like everybody else, we bought textbooks. That's just what you did. Uh, you had an adoption every six to eight years. You bought the textbooks and all the ancillary materials. You shipped it out to schools. You called it a day. My work here is done. Everybody has materials. Moving on to the next adoption. What you all probably experienced um, that we were experiencing is that they weren't being used. And you're talking millions and millions of dollars in resources that are shoved in closets or um, stored on shelves. And from an academic division pedagogical approach isn't really the way to address teaching and learning anyway. It should be a supplemental resource. Um, but, um, but here we are, right? So uh, COVID hits, right? We build out um, CTLS and, and for the student platform and we start looking differently at how we approach learning resources. So here we are in Georgia where it took the state, you know, 15 years to approve the new math standards. And, um, and we're like two years behind on an adoption because they're changing standards and they can't get a final and we're doing some preliminary research on math textbooks. And what we're learning is that, A, they haven't had time to update their textbooks to align to the new standards. And B, textbook publishers think that we are, not, we are all now rolling in money. Oh, you've got all this ESSER money. You've got all this ART funding. Oh, you've got all this CARES Act money. You all are rolling in money. So what we're going to do is we're going to jack up our prices because you can now afford it and you need us. And we're doing preliminary research and learning that, hey, we won't have a textbook ready for you for another 6 to 12 months, by the way, because we've got to update to new standards. You're already two years behind on providing resources to your teachers. Oh, and by the way, we're going to charge you $25 million for it, right? Something exorbitant. And we're looking around at each other this is going, what are we doing? To Lonnie's point, what are we doing? So we, um, we made a decision, a rather courageous one, if I might add, to develop our own content. So that's what we're doing. We shifted away from textbook providers for the majority of our courses, except, uh, exceptions like AP, right? College Board runs the world when it comes to that. So you know, you gotta have that. But for the most part, we are developing K-12 math content ourselves. We have strategic partners, of course, with whom we work who are helping us to actually develop that content, but we're doing it on platform. Much of it is foundational through OERs, because again, to Lonnie's point, the information's already out there. So let's grab it and let's build custom content for Cobb by Cobb, design, develop, deliver, through CTLS, which is exactly what we're doing. Um, thank you guys for doing that for me. Go ahead and push it through, thank you. So advantages to this far outweigh the disadvantages. We own this content in perpetuity. So the next time the state decides to change math standards, for example, which I expect will be in about six months, <laughs> then we can modify our content immediately just like with CTLS originally. Our teachers say, hey, we really need this. Well, I could reach out to an out-of-the-box LMS and say to them, hey, our teachers really need this. They'll say, we will put that on our roadmap in 12, 18, 24 months from now, you might have it. But because we designed it in-house, we own it, we control it. If our teachers need something, they get it, sometimes within a quarter. 
because we prioritize based on what Cobb needs. So we'll own this content in perpetuity. Things change. We'll move it around. If teachers come back and say, this lesson, it isn't working for us, then let's change it. We'll update it. We'll modify it. We'll make it what you need it to be. And because it's all being delivered on platform, then that's one less thing that they have to do, Lonnie, that a tech can do for them, right? I want your content. That's all I have to say. Uh, we could talk about that later. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you 10 million for it. See, right? right. We're on to something. So the other shift that we made was the, this language around a core resource, right? Your textbook was your core resource. And we started having conversations around developing custom content. We're like, there's not one core resource in a teacher's arsenal for teaching and learning. There are multiple resources that support math instruction in a Cobb classroom. So what does that look like? And we started talking and we created what we're call now calling the core package. Yes, you're gonna have this custom developed content that's in CTLS delivered to you, but that's not the end all be all either. What else do we have that you can use? And that's what you're seeing up here in the core package. Um, K-8 are getting consumable work texts because we recognize the need for that, especially in math instruction. We have digital manipulatives as well as physical manipulatives that will be provided for teachers. Um, we have our learning object repository, otherwise known as the resource library, built into CTLS that has hundreds of thousands of pieces of standards aligned vetted content that teachers can leverage. We have our own teachers who have phenomenal resources out there that we can use and share amongst each other for the purpose of teaching and learning. And then of course what we're gonna, I'll turn over to Megan here in just a minute, of course is the on demand um, professional learning that goes along with supporting pedagogy. It's about the pedagogy. These are resources to support that. So sure, you might have to learn how to access it through the system, but it's really about math instruction and how you can leverage these resources to support those best practices. Thank you, Josie. So um, this is just a quick snapshot. You're seeing this before some other people in this district, but I wanted you to be able to notice that um, it's in CTLS is what you see here. And the other thing that we're incredibly proud of, and it doesn't, it's not important for grade one, um, but it is important for 9-12, is that we have partnered on this development project with our Cobb Virtual Academy so that all of the content that we're providing in this district meets the needs of all of our students. So why does instruction look differently in a virtual academy than it does in a face-to-face -face classroom? That doesn't make sense. Algebra one is algebra one. And shouldn't they be provided equitable experiences? So we're working with them on that in conjunction so that you have the flexibility, Lonnie, right? Here we go again with flexibility, thank you to deliver this asynchronously to a CVA student as designed, move through the course at their speed, or, and this is what Stacy mentioned a minute ago, we've developed the system in such a way that a face-to-face -face teacher can pull it all apart. And now you just have individual learning objects. You pick and choose what you need for your kids when you need it, depending on that individualized Instruction, you can pull it all apart and you can supplement it with others. Flexibility. Thank you, Josie, for trying to keep me because you know I'll talk forever. So um, <coughs> Megan's gonna talk to you a little bit about how we have been supporting all of this with professional learning and how we continue to do so as we move forward. Thank you. Thanks. So Janelle and Stacy both alluded to the fact that the system has been rolled out over time. Uh, we also have teachers that have come to us over time, right? We have teachers who were already teaching with us pre-pandemic, teachers who joined us during the pandemic, and then teachers who have come on afterwards. And so 
We need both a, a common expectation, we're all gonna use the system and we're all gonna use it in a similar way, right? But then we also need some differentiation for our teachers, just like we do for our students, uh, for that professional development. I was about to click this like it was a clicker, but it's not. So during pre-planning for this current school year, one of the things that we did was we presented to teachers, here is that baseline expectation of usage, right? We're all gonna be in the same place at the same time so parents and students know where they're going, know what to expect when they get there. And so here, here's your basic expectations. We're all gonna be doing this, right? So in each of the areas of CTLS, here are the things that we're expecting that we're all doing and we're all on the same page. You can go ahead and flip. When teachers came back for pre-planning, one of the things that was really important was to give them choice and opportunity to receive professional development based on what they actually needed. And so teachers were given basically a self-assessment. They reflected on where they were uh, in each of the kind of subsystems of CTLS, where do I need the most support? Where do I need the most practice? Do I need it with communication with parents? Do I need it in the assessment? platform or part of the platform. And so after they did this self-assessment, then you go ahead and go on to the next one. Then they were kind of pointed toward resources that met their specific needs. So some asynchronous courses had been developed within the platform that they could then go and take just the pieces that they needed. So maybe I just need this module on how to use CTLS parent. Maybe I just need this particular module on how to set up my digital classroom because that's where I am. Absolutely. Okay. I was just assessing, like, mentally how that was coded. So this is hard coded, right? So it's branch structure logic down from the selection into a recommendations engine that's already preloaded. Go to the next screen. So once they saw, okay, here, just based on my self-assessment, here's where I'm feeling pretty confident, here's where I'm not, they were able to select what course they needed to take. I don't think it's that complicated. Nope, yeah, so definitely it's not. Like AI. No, it's not. no. It's and then on this particular day, because this was, you know, district PL during pre-planning, right, we had real-time assistance available virtually. So we partnered with our instructional technology department. They were kind of manning a back channel uh, to be able to answer questions, to be able to jump on a Teams call and just real time support and troubleshoot as needed or just answer, you know, okay, this looks great, but I don't really know how to use it in my context. They were available to answer those types of things. You can go ahead. And then just moving forward, uh, professional development, we want to kind of approach it like a wraparound, right? We don't want to, it's not a one size fits all. And so again, we're working with instructional technology to, to, to provide that real time, either in person or virtual, support, training, things like that. But then we also have the asynchronous courses that are built into our learning management platform system that the teachers can go and take self-paced. Maybe they don't need as much time on this particular module. They can move on to what they need. Uh, and then on-demand support resources, we have a, a library of PDF and video tutorials, step-by-step -step for those users that they really don't need to sit and do all of this. They just send me on my way, give me the how-to and I'll go and do it. I think that's the last one. Yeah, and that's about our time, too. <clears throat> I had um, put the question slide up there, um, Lonnie, but I recognize that we're trying to stick to an agenda, so. We do, oh, okay, great. Well then, um, questions. Nobody asked, but you know, I'm going to have some. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so are the other core subjects, is it just math, or are the other core subjects doing this as well? Well, one step, at, right, one subject at a time. Okay. Um, so yes, the, the idea is to assess each subject area as to what do you need, what do you continue to need in print, and what can be digitally developed? Because it's not going to be the same for everybody. <clears throat> for example, ELA will be next. <clears throat> I'm sorry, excuse me. In ELA, you need print resources. <laughs> There's no way around it, right? You need classroom libraries, right? You, you need book rooms. There, there are some things you have to have. So it's the matter that we will sit down and assess each individual subject area and determine all right, how much can be de developed digitally and how much is still going to need to be an investment in some sort of print. But when it comes to the teacher resources, we'll always have those digitally inside of CPLS. It's the it's student great point. resources that we will evaluate each year to see whether or not it needs to be a hybrid approach. Or Agreed.
Agreed. Thank you for that. Can I add a plug, though, because I think what her question is, is, is are there resources now for every content? And the answer oh. is yes. Yes. Yeah. There is. Thanks, Trish. Covers every, they're just, what they're talking about are the textbooks, or they're going that. in that way. But there's, right now, they can go in and create tests. They can go in and create assessments. They can pull lessons, resources, all that for every content area. Thank you, Trisha. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And um, I, you're sharing with your digital or virtual learning uh, program. So are you sharing assessments or you're just sharing content? Everything. The, they share the assessments as well. And where are your assessments housed? In CTLS. So all of our assessment, assessment items are inside of there. So if I'm a CBA teacher, a lot of what they do, they do at a higher level. The teacher itself doesn't build the assessment. It's the, right. um, the supervisor. So the coordinators do the, so they can pull those assessment items from the assessed bank. Because okay. um, we're thinking of not sharing the assessments. We have a full-time school, we have a supplement program, we want to keep the integrity of the assessments. But we do have an assessment uh, repository, mm -hmm. Illuminate, where they, we do district assessments mm -hmm. in math and mm -hmm. I think all the core areas that they have to take from. So we're thinking of sharing our content Sure. Pages, just like mm -hmm. you share a textbook, but not assessments so that we can keep the integrity through them. Well, we can certainly connect you with our director for the Co Virtual Academy. Oh, there you go. <laughs> they are definitely going to be a wealth of knowledge in terms yeah. of how they manage all of those, all of those pieces, too. So what's the back end of CTLS? What platform is it built on? There is not one. Okay. That is where we talk about where we built it. So we have different partners that we work with. So we don't have a Canvas, we don't have a Schoology, we don't have a Safari Montage. We have three different partners that we work with that customize it specifically for us. Is it a Python grade build? We just want to do I want to say yes, but I don't know that for sure. Yeah. Because your flexibility in the future is going to depend on being with the most current coding language. Uh, yeah, I, I, I am pretty sure. I feel confident in saying that it is. Um, I also have the utmost confidence in our partners to ensure that it is. So, but we can certainly Did confirm that. Did they say that. the word refactoring to you? No. <laughs> <laughs> and we do have another um, person that was CTLS technology for academics that he probably could, or I mean for technology. You have a new director for CTLS technology? Yes. Okay. That represents obviously the technical back end side of some of this. That could probably speak to that too, but um, but yeah, no, I'm not not worried. So then my final question for you guys is, is you know, we talked about the hybrid logistics function. Correct. Which is currently hosted, you know, within its own platform, but it's right. a, but it's a technology that, you know, could be separate from that, right? The the, the ability to add dimensional intelligence to time. And cohorting and floating meetings, all that's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that as COM? Like, because that would be something that would go, like, maybe change the way your system also would have another function. It would. That, I think that would be a, a larger conversation, yeah. obviously, around what that could look like. Well, you've built in enough flexibility. We have. The way that it's yeah, technologically speaking, I don't think it would be a problem. I, I think there's enough flexibility in the system that we could add something to it if we needed to, but at the same time, no idea what that would look like or if I'm even speaking truth. Well, it looks like you have, you have a big build. Of, we do. Just from your screen shots. <laughs> I would say you have a back-end database structure that tethers field function in a, and, you know, so, so there's a certain thing you do as a coder, you're like, I want this field to be used here, 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 and here, mm -hmm. and also I want to auto-generate new fields at will. Those are really hard coding things that I can see from what you're doing mm -hmm. that you've done that. I would assume so. I feel confident like a, saying that, don't you? Yeah. This isn't like a silly WordPress. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> and to your, to your point, even in our current structure, um, the ability for pacing, uh, right, like assignment assessment can 
completion and performance-based pacing, all of those things are already built into the system and continuing to be uh, improved upon. Yeah, and my prediction is if they do this thing in Georgia where everybody has choice, <coughs> you might need your third rail, right? You got your online, you got mm -hmm. your building. Mm -hmm. You might need that third rail where it's like, bring your choice dollars over here, we'll customize. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? I do. Yeah. I think that's an option because the way you're built. Right. Yeah. There's definitely, yes. Options are there. Third door. Mm -hmm. door number three. <laughs> um, before I conclude, I just want to um, also say that we are um, thankfully joined by our Assistant Superintendent for Teaching and Learning, Kelly Metcalf. She snuck in on us um, a little bit earlier. I wasn't sure if there was anything you else you wanted to add or say. Okay. This is an amazing system, and Janelle and Stacy and Megan have done a wonderful job leading this. So when I came in this position, Janelle and Stacy were here and leading this work, and it's just been amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Great it is. Thank you for sharing with me. Absolutely, and thank you for the support. So, turn it over to you. Thank you.